What did you say? Can we make a late Parsha show? We could. I'm just working on it right now, as you can see. That's uh. Hey, I am mentally preparing this video for you to view it and, God willing, be inspired by it and enjoy it on the ninth day above, usually a day that we don't associate with enjoyment and pleasure because it is the day on which the Holy Temple, the Beis HaMikdash, Beis HaMikdash number one and the second, was destroyed. But this year, we are hoping, as we do every year, and we only have more reason to believe it will happen this year, that we will not be fasting and we will not be observing the normal laws and customs of Tisha B'Av, of the ninth day above, but we will be rejoicing Mashiach's arrival and revelation. If chas v'shalom not, and it's hard to fathom how that's possible, I almost feel bad saying that, but then I hope that your fast is going okay, and I hope that you can uh, be inspired by this video. So, because it's the late Parsha show, let's talk about Devarim. We have just begun the fifth and final book of the five books of the Torah. This is the book called Deuteronomy, more accurately, Devarim. Devarim means words, and these are the words, words of rebuke. Well, that was definitely supposed to happen. These are the words that Moshe, our leader, speaks to us, tells us, before we enter the land of Canaan as a nation, the nation of Israel, to make the land of Canaan what it's supposed to be, the land of Israel, as God promised to our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moshe is telling us his parting words because he is not going to join us in the land of Israel. Why? Well, you might know, you might not know, but that's not the point of this video. Ooh, that rhymed. You might know, you might not know, but that's not the point of this video. What? Don't judge me. I'm not listening to music even for a day. I start going crazy, okay? All right. What is the one lesson that I think is most vital right now for me and for you watching this video? Yes. I am being bold enough to assume that there is a lesson that you can apply in your life. That, I hope that sentence made sense. Life needs to be conquered by you. That probably is not the right, that sounds bad. Life needs to be conquered. Life needs to be lived by you. Now, duh, of course you're the one living your life. But what I mean is the purpose of life, is of why your soul is in a body not just a body, but your soul, your godly soul, goes into an animalistic soul that itself is spiritual. And that animalistic soul goes into a body that's corporeal, that's material, that's grub. The purpose of all of this is to make the land of Canaan into the land of Israel. And in very short, let's just put it this way, it's to live a godly life here in the materialism. No spiritual leader, no matter how great he is, even of the caliber of Moses himself, no tzaddik, no rebbe is going to do the work for you. The work that you need to do. The work that God put you here for. Moses tells us, I'm not going in, but you are. Get, whoa. <laughs> In Mashiach mode. That means simply to demand Mashiach from God by means of your actions. So very soon we are going to see Moshe Rabbeinu. We are going to see Mashiach, our Redeemer. We are going to go into the land of Israel. We are going to see the Beis HaMikdash for real. Let's increase in the joy in our life, getting in this mode, preparing to see this to experience this. Let's, of course, increase in our love for one another because ultimately we are one. Let us study more Torah, particularly about Mashiach, about the Beis HaMikdash. Let us 
do another mitzvah. I say let us as in, as in, like let us. Well, please God, let us. And I think God does, right? So I'm saying I should and you should do another mitzvah with added enthusiasm. And enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. I am tired. Oy be rachamim, be rachamim toshu. Sish koin besoicho, kasher di bavarto. Sish koin besoicho, kasher di bavarto. Oh, 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 oh.